So now it's moving day and I'm just starting to pack everything away. Now before my first proper drive in the UK, I did want to check a couple of things. I knew the speed limit would be different. So on a single lane, it's maximum 50 miles per hour and on a dual carriageway or motorway it's 60 miles per hour. So I need to remember that part. And then the other quirk that I've noticed is caravans may not be towed in the outside lane of a three or four lane motorway. That's interesting. It's it's much more enjoyable drive for me if I'm one in because then you don't have to try to merge with, with people coming onto the motorway so it does make sense. I imagine with this bathroom door it just needs to be shut for traveling. If I want to have the fridge running through the car battery it reads like I should turn off the main power. So maybe maybe I just turn it off but turn it on to the battery and then when I arrive I'll just see how cold the fridge is. And this is just the uh, grey water hose and you just close two little caps and that's it. Simple. I'm going to do a test. We're good. That was quite easy reversing. Um, when you get to a certain distance, the mirror, at the camera at the back of the car changes, so it's a bird eye view. So I was able to see exactly how close I was to the tow ball, which was really helpful. It's definitely a different type of connection there. It's a little bit awkward, but yeah, it's got there. difference I've already noticed driving in the UK are lights on the roundabout. Now this is the really embarrassing part I interpreted the instruction manual differently. To me, the outside lane means the slow lane. <laughs> so I completely misread those instructions. So it wasn't until a guy angrily flashed me, honked me and gave me the biggest evils when he drove past that I finally clicked that I should be in the left lane. And I've actually noticed there's a cool system that when I pass a slow truck, sometimes they will give a little flash of their lights when I've passed so that I know that there is enough room for me to pull over back into
into the slow lane and then I got stuck in some slow traffic around Birmingham which would have added another half an hour onto the trip. Well, I'm taking a break. I've just pulled over into this parking area on the side of the motorway that says parking. There's someone in front of me. I was planning to have a stop halfway and I didn't. And now I'm kind of um, only I've only got an hour to go on this drive so I need a break I really do need a break this is one seriously busy stop I'm kind of uh, over driving already and I want to I want to get there already <laughs> made it <laughs> oh, I think I've managed to get the most private still available site while I attempted a few goes reversing into the spot it's just a different feel the caravan and the car and you're supposed to have one corner of the caravan next to the white peg and the first go I I was about a meter off so I got there in the end I'm not perfectly straight but it'll do I don't look embarrassing I'm fine so now I go back to a reception and let them know what number I'm on <sighs> that was a long day so I went and just collected my key this is apparently so I can walk to uh, Chatsworth house and apparently there's a cool walk to the village Now that I've settled in, I thought I'd just rest a bit, read some of the paperwork they've given me. It's a nicely maintained campground. But busy, I'm glad I pre-booked. And by the way, I reached this campground and everything was still cold, so it looks like that battery system works when you have the main power turned off. And you've got your own entrance to a lovely walkway so that sounds like it's to the little village and then this is on the way to Chatsworth I think oh, what a what a surprise I guess my favorite type of campground is you get to walk straight from it to something and come on you get to walk to Chatsworth from the campground with your own secret entrance that's pretty special.